In this webcast, I'm going to be discussing the E2 elimination pathway, which involves concerted bond breaking and bond making. The curved arrows for this process are shown here, and what you'll notice from these arrows is that they imply a variety of frontier orbital interactions in this process. This first arrow from the ethoxide to the hydrogen implies an N to sigma star interaction, not unlike what you've already seen with acid-base chemistry. This arrow here implies a sigma to sigma star type interaction from the CH bond to the sigma star of the CX bond, and that's suggested also by this third arrow, which shows the CX sigma bond breaking. The transition state for this process is shown here, and what you should notice about this transition state is first of all that the PT step, which I'll highlight here, and the DN step, highlighted here, are occurring at the same time, and this transition state involves two molecules, the base and the substrate, hence the reason why we call it the E2 mechanism. The products that result are an alkene, the leaving group, X minus, and the conjugate acid of the base that was used, in this case, ethanol. A common issue in all elimination reactions is the issue of regioselectivity. That is, given we have a variety of hydrogen atoms around the carbon leaving group bond, how do we know which double bond will be formed? If we deprotonate on the left-hand side, for instance, we'll form the alkene shown on the left here, and if we do deprotonate on the right-hand side, we'll form the alkene shown on the right. Is there a way we can systematically predict which product will predominate? And indeed, there absolutely is. And we can do it by looking at the stability of the products. And so we know that the more substituted double bond will be more stable. And because the energy of the products correlates directly with the energy of the transition states, you'll notice that the energy difference here is very similar to the energy difference up here. We can say that the more substituted double bond will be formed not only in greater amounts at equilibrium, but also more quickly. And that's represented by the lower hump or the lower activation barrier to access the lower energy product. And so on the next slide, what's shown for you here is the transition states for each of these processes. And you'll notice here that a substantial amount of double bond character is developed in the transition state. And this is a great advantage for chemists because we can use our stability trends for alkenes to decide which product will be formed in greater amounts. And so you can see here that deprotonation of this hydrogen leads to the more substituted double bond, and as a result, that product will be the major product, and this transition state will be accessed more quickly than that of the minor product, in which one of these outside, or methyl hydrogens, is taken off by the base, which leads to only a mono-substituted double bond. And so the take-home message from this webcast is that it certainly is possible to predict the regiochemistry of the E2 elimination reaction. All you have to do is look at the stability of the two double bonds that would result in the context of our stability trend that we've learned about substitution correlating with the stability of alkenes.